Welcome everybody to the Virtually Connected. My name is Tim Sandy and I'm a VMware Technical Partner Manager and Systems Engineer. In this session today, I'm going to do a demo of the AirWatch Administrative Console and I'm going to be doing this within the EUC test drive demo environment. Now for any of you that are not familiar with the EUC test drive environment, it is an environment, again a demo environment, that VMware has created for VMware partners to go in to learn our EUC or end user computing based solution sets. And it's also an environment for our partners to be able to use to demonstrate to their partners or end customers our solutions in end user computing. So again, I'm going to be using that demo environment and I'm going to be going into the admin AirWatch console and going through the console to show you all the information that AirWatch can bring forth in regarding to mobile device management. Anything from again phones to tablets to computers to rugged devices. Uh, it's going to bring and we're, I'm going to show you all the information and regarding to those devices, what kind of operating system they have, what kind of device they are, uh, the information associated to a particular device, whether it meets compliance based upon the profiles that you've created. So I'm going to go through a lot of that information within the AirWatch admin console. So let's get started. This is the EUC test drive environment right here uh, that I'm already in, as you see. This is the main dashboard page, which you can get to by clicking here on dashboard. Now, for those that are new to the test drive and are just getting logged in, in order to do the AirWatch demo, you must go to the My Services section here on the navigation page. So click on that, which was right here. And then you're going to see right here, here's all the different services. Now, you're going to see some that are grayed out, like Box and DocuSign, which you can't move the slider here to enable them. All the rest of these you can. You do need to make sure that you enable the AirWatch service here by clicking the little button here to the right and making sure that comes green. A pop-up will come up and it'll look something like this and I can bring it up again by clicking on that little icon with the letter I. Now the one thing to know as far as logging into the AirWatch admin console, it is different compared to uh, any of the other solution sets within the EUC test drive environment. It's the only one that requires you when you're logging in to actually put the domain slash username in for the username. All the rest of them, you just use your plain username. Uh, the AirWatch admin console, you do have to do the VMW demo domain slash your username first. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Also, uh, going back to the dashboard real quick, we also have the Test Drive KB articles as well as the YouTube playlists. And just to show you those real quickly, so in regards to looking at and demoing AirWatch, you can see AirWatch is listed here. There's many other articles, videos regarding AirWatch as well as the other solution sets, but here's the ones related to AirWatch. So I highly recommend that you go and look at those. Also here is the YouTube page. Again, you can look for AirWatch specific ones. As well as one thing I wanted to show you real quick too, videos.vmtestdrive.com. These are the videos that are specific for the UC test drive environment. So again, you can go in and look at the specific video for whatever solution that you happen to be looking at or going to be demoing in the EUC test drive environment. So as you hear, we got a AirWatch Express demo. So again, you can just scroll through these. And these are, I just wanted to point out these resources for those of you that are new to the environment. Again, that's just videos.vmtestdrive.com. So here uh, I've already brought up, actually let me go back real quick here, uh, within the navigation pane here to get to the AirWatch admin console page, you're gonna click on this AirWatch admin console. And this is gonna bring up this tab here with this link. And again, like I said, the login for this is domain slash username in this example. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get logged in here. Now, once we get logged in, as you see, to the AirWatch Admin Console, it's going to bring us to the Devices Dashboard. Now, if you look on the left-hand side here is basically, again, a navigation pane. Um, you have the hub, devices, which it comes in automatically. And as you see, as I move across these different selections, there are different sub-menus associated to each one of these. But the default, as I said, when it comes in, it comes to devices and dashboard. Now, as you see here, the dashboards are gonna give you a nice overview of whichever particular tab you happen to be on. As you see here, there is lots of information. 
in the dashboards. It's a nice overview. But to show you real quick, within the AirWatch admin console, there are different levels of administration that we can look at. Now, right now, as you see, this is the device administrator for finance admin. But as you see, there's multiple other ones. So depending on what you're wanting to show, you may select the different view. I'm gonna to go to the device administrator for worldwide enterprises. That is at the highest level. Now, keep in mind that AirWatch was intended to be multi-tenancy aware, which means that, for example, if you have a global company that has offices all around the world and you have them broken down into different sites like this example does here so again i'm at the global level worldwide enterprises if i click on this right here you're going to see that the top level is worldwide enterprises and then underneath there are geographical regions such as asia pacific EMEA, North America, and South America. So this kind of reflects that multi-tenancy environment that I was talking about. Now, typically in large global organizations like this, what's going to happen is you're going to have your enterprise level domain administrators that have rights to the entire environment across the entire organization. They will have administrative rights within AirWatch in this particular case at, across all the different site locations. But then what's going to happen is because the organization is so large, typically you will have site administrators where you'll have administrators that manage the Asia Pacific site and only that site. Then you'll have ones that manage EMEA and only that site and so on and so forth. The enterprise guys will be at the top level. They'll have rights to anything and everything within the entire organization. So this gives you that multi-tenancy type look and feel that large global organizations will have. And then of course your, your uh, rights and what you can see and what you can do are going to be specific to what permission sets that you have and at what level. So here uh, we're on the devices and the dashboard. I'm going to go to the hub real quick here in the overview. Now you're going to see that the AirWatch hub here, it gives you a lot of information on all of these dashboards and overview uh, panes. So for example, we're looking at devices right now. We have a status breakdown. We have 19 registered devices, 204 enrolled, seven that were enterprise white pendings, and we have 241 that were enrolled. Now keep in mind that this AirWatch environment is in the EUC test drive environment, which is a demo environment. It's not a live production site, okay? Now you're gonna see you have registered and enrolled. And the difference between a registered and enrolled device in AirWatch is that basically a registered device is when an administrator has say, maybe a bunch of corporate owned devices that they've gone and they've prepared for a bunch of users and they've registered those devices and then they're gonna send them out to those users. And then those users are gonna get the device, power it up, and then they're gonna go and bring up the AirWatch agent. They're gonna put in their email address, for example, and they're gonna do that and authenticate, and then it'll officially enroll that device into AirWatch. So that's the difference between registered and enrolled, for example. Then if we look at the uh, platform breakdown, as you see, we have a lot of different types of devices and OSs in this case, the platform. So we have Chrome OS. We have uh, Apple iOS, Apple Mac OS, Windows 7, Windows Desktop, Android and Windows Phone. So it gives us a nice idea overview of how many devices we have uh, and what kind of platforms there. Enrollment history, again, gives you kind of a breakdown of that. Uh, AirWatch is also meant to be very useful as far as compliance. So you can create profiles that do certain restrictions, either restrict access to something, and maybe for example, they restrict access to certain documents when they're only connected to the corporate Wi-Fi, but if they're out in a coffee house somewhere on a public Wi-Fi, then they won't have access to those documents. So AirWatch is very flexible like that with its profiles and compliance standards. So here you're gonna see where there'd be any type of compliance violations, what the violations are, which policies are being violated, which devices with blacklisted apps. And then you have a listing there of devices without the required apps. So again, this is a, a demo environment area, so you're not gonna see much in regards to that. But if this was a production environment, you would see some information here, hopefully not a lot when it comes to violations. Then I mentioned profiles. So again, we're gonna build profiles, which 
basically either restrict or give access to either an application or documents, whether they're in on the corporate network or not, or, you know, whatever it may be. It may require that, for example, this one here requires a passcode on the device. This one is a per app VPN. So there's a lot of different ways and aspects that you can manage your devices by these profiles, making sure that they meet certain compliance standards. And then as well as pushing out apps to your devices as well. Here are some particular type of applications. As you see here, we got VMware Boxer. We got 100% of the uh, devices that are supposed to have Boxer have that. Also the Horizon Client, VMware Workstream. So as you can see here, and then, and then also the most common installed apps. So there's a lot of information. And then when we get down to content, this is more of like your documents or maybe videos. And this is all a part of, you know, part of AirWatch is the content locker, which is kind of like an enterprise class, either a version of Box or Dropbox, which some of you may be aware of. It's more enterprise class though. So it has a lot more capabilities to restrict access or give depending on the scenario based on those profiles that we've set for depending on network or what kind of device or where they're at. So also we have email restrictions that we can put into place, policy viol violations to where maybe we can't download or attach documents unless we're on the corporate network, so on and so forth. And of course, a part of AirWatch is security and authentication is using certificates. So this also gives you a good overview of any potential expiring uh, certificates on these devices in less than a month, one to three, you get the point. So that's just the, the hub overview. As you see here, we can also do reports and different type of analytics based on our devices, compliance, content, whatever it may be. Because we can manage all this and from a compliance standpoint, AirWatch provides a lot of capabilities for you to also run reports and analytics against it. As you see here, these are a bunch of out-of-the-box uh, reports and analytics that can be pulled on devices and the content and the applications. So just to kind of give you an idea, and then you can also export those. So let's go down to the devices tab here. And again, like I said, here's the devices tab. The, uh, the dashboard gives you uh, an overall security perspective, how many that are compromised, that have no passcode when they're supposed to, how many are not encrypted they're supposed to, and then the ownership of them, such as how many are dedicated corporate devices, how many are employee and how many are unidentified. Now keep in mind to have full control over a corporate owned device from an AirWatch perspective. Those devices actually have to be purchased directly from Apple and Apple loads a particular application on there which allows AirWatch to have full control over the device. Now if you go and buy any type of Apple device, whether it's a phone or an iPad, uh, from a, say, a cellular store or retail store, it doesn't have that application on there. So AirWatch cannot have full control and manage that device solely because it doesn't have that added program on there. That can only be added on by Apple themselves. So when the corporation wants to have corporate-owned devices from Apple, they have to order them directly through a direct Apple plier that loads that particular type of application on there that allows AirWatch to have that full control over, uh, especially if it's a cell phone, it can do things like enterprise wiping the device, it can um, turn on and off or limit the amount of data used or maybe amount of minutes used on the phone and give warnings. It gives that full control capability, whereas a, a employee's own personal device that they bought from a retail store, it's limited in what AirWatch can fully control. They can't fully wipe the device and do some higher level aspects like that. And as you see here on the dashboard, it just gives you a last seen overview, how many devices were seen in the last eight hours, uh, breakdown over the amount of days, again, the type of platforms, enrollment, operating system breakdown on the particular Apple iOS version, which is useful, Android, Windows Phone and Windows rugged devices. So very useful information as you see here. We also have uh, profiles here. We have a lot of these profiles built for the different types of devices. As you can see, uh, we've built ones if you're doing healthcare. We have some specific to Android, specific to Apple. So we've got a lot of different profiles that we can create to where again, we can implement certain requirements such as passcodes, 
uh, access to certain applications, install them automatically, restrict access to certain applications, whatever it may be. And then down here, we have the compliance policies. So again, here's some compliance policies that we have, and you can assign groups. You can see event logs, certificates, again, a list view of the certificates. Again, certificates are important. You also information regarding staging and provisioning. There's an overall dashboard. Now again, like I said, this is a test environment, so you're not gonna see much in here. Um, some of the different components such as applications, don't expect to see much in here because it is a test environment. And then if we go down to apps and books, as you see here, we got the list view of apps and books. So these can be internal apps. These can be normal uh, public apps from, say, the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, Windows App Store, whatever it may be. As you can see here, again, it can be internal. It can be public, such as Adobe products. You can pull analytics against all of these. You can also do application assignments based upon certain groups of uh, either users and or groups of apps. Also, if you have any books that you would like to publish, maybe you encourage your managers reading some uh, how to be a successful manager books or something to that effect, you can publish books on there assign them and make them accessible. From a content standpoint, again, Content Locker is kind of like the enterprise version of either Box or Dropbox, uh, except for you can do a lot more restrictions based on that. Here's a dashboard showing you storage history, user content status, content engagement, user breakdown. You can do different repositories, such as an admin repository. So you can uh, create one that are specifically for your admins to have access to this, whereas your standard users have their own repository for content. You can also create manual and automatic templates for this, as well as a part of content is videos. Now, videos, especially if you have, let's say you're a large global company and you have certain, say, ethics and compliance training that everybody has to do every single year, or you have sales people that have to do some sort of sales training in regarding to ethics, and you can post videos into the content here. And then again, based upon the groups, you can provide access to your specific groups of users, access to certain videos and restrict others. You can also track whether or not the videos have been watched. So if there's a mandatory training, you can go ahead and publish that out, put that into all everybody's content locker, and then you can monitor and do analytics based upon who has watched it and who it hasn't. So that way you can go back and send out an email to users, say, hey, you've got one day left before this training must be done, and you can send it to those specific users that have not watched it yet. So again, that's video content. And then email is also a part. We have a part of uh, AirWatch is Boxer, which is our email application, to where you can also do a lot of restrictions based upon email, such as uh, adding or viewing attachments or certain types of attachments. Maybe you wanna restrict size of attachments, so you're gonna block any type of video or audio type attachments and only allow normal documents such as Word, PDFs, and such. Maybe you have some documents that are listed as internal only. You may restrict them from being attached to an email unless it is only to a internal email addressee. So as you can see here, this dashboard gives you idea of your configuration status for email, as well as any violations, configurations, and also your uh, top five devices here. And you have list views, of course, of this. And this breaks it down by user and their email address. Now, here we have telecom. Now, keep in mind, as I mentioned earlier, that when it comes to any information regarding to a cell phone, the telecom, the data, the cell phone use, SMS messages, this has to be a corporate owned device for us to fully control this type of information as to whether we can restrict usage of, say, phone calls or data or anything like that. If it's a personal device, a BYO type of device, we can't restrict anything, of course. 
so just keep that in mind. But if we do have full control over them, we can um, monitor the amount of minutes used, the amount of data used, SMS messages, if they're getting used to also uh, roaming. So if we don't want to allow roaming charges, we can restrict roaming as well as uh, if we do have a limit on the amount of say data usage or SMS messages or amount of minutes used on the cell phone plan for that work phone, we can send out messages to that device to warn them that, hey, you're at 95% of your usage. Um, please be aware of this to that type of information. So very useful. And then this last section here is groups and settings. That's the administrative section. So those, those AirWatch administrators are going to uh, do a lot of the configuration setting in this area. So I'm going to go back to devices for a second here. Go to list view. So now that we're in the devices list view, we can also do searching for a particular device. So for example, I'm going to search for my name. And here's a, a personal device that I had enrolled. I'm going to click on that. And as you can see, it gives me a good overall status. It gives me all sorts of information about the device, the serial number, UDID, storage capacity, physical memory. It gives me a lot of information, not only hardware, but also software. Also from a security perspective is, you know, have I met security requirements and profiles? Have I installed the associated profiles? How many of the default apps did I get from those profiles? content, if any, push down, certificates, and also network status. So as you see, we also have tabs for compliance, profiles. Again, because this is a BYO device in a test environment, there's not a lot here. We do have, as you see here, some profiles that did get pushed down requiring a passcode for the device. Also the applications on my device. Now keep in mind, this is gonna show both applications that I personally have installed, but then also there are applications that got pushed by the profile that was pushed down to my device from AirWatch. So as you see, the green check marks here are ones that were pushed by, the bright green, I should say, were pushed by uh, AirWatch, as well as some others like the agent. And then you're gonna see that there's also some other applications rather that I could also have uh, put on there myself. And then the content tab, and this is going to be, again, documents from the content. So this could be PDF files, Word documents, this could be videos, uh, image files, you know, a lot of different ones, Excel files. And as you see, there's little uh, images to tell you what kind of a file that these are. These are ones I have on there, as well as ones that AirWatch may have pushed down as a part of any requirements or profiles. Now, location information, user information, you're not going to have that because this is a, uh, my personal device and they don't have that application on there to give AirWatch full control. And then you have the More tab, which, again, gives you uh, some additional options in which you can do that. If you look over here, you can also query the device. You can send an SMS message. And then here under More Actions, you're going to see uh, what's a little, little confusing by title you're gonna see that this says enterprise wipe. Now, if you remember correctly, I said that if it's a personal device, we don't have full control over it. So being that this is my device, it's my personal device. AirWatch can't completely wipe my device because it doesn't have that full control. So that terminology enterprise wipe is a little misleading in my opinion. What that's gonna do is that is gonna wipe off all the corporate AirWatch information, applications, and everything off the personal device. It's not going to actually wipe the entire device. It's just going to wipe any of the AirWatch-related and corporate-related devices. Because once AirWatch gets uh, enrolled, it creates like a separate container, separate from any of my personal stuff on my device. So it would only remove anything that's inside that enterprise AirWatch container that's work-related. Now, if it was a corporate owned device and I had full administrative capability, you were gonna see another version of the device wipe, which would be basically to reset it back to as though you took it out of the box right from the factory, as though it was brand new. That option would be right here. Now I'm not seeing this in this environment because we don't, we've got that disabled in here uh, based upon it being a demo environment, but just be aware that in a production environment, 
if you had that the proper permissions and it was a corporate owned device, you would have that full device wiped to where you could basically take it back to the way it was right out of the box. So again, these more actions, there's other things like find a device, you know, sync the device, uh, you can pull device information, the AirWatch MDM agent, security profiles, apps, and so on and so forth. So that gives you a good idea of just the overview of what the AirWatch admin console can do, what's in it. Uh, as you see here also, there's even things like you can install printers for any of your devices as well, if need be. So as you can see, we AirWatch gives you full capabilities to manage all sorts of types of devices, whether it be phones, tablets, computers, whatever it may be. And it can be across iOS, Android, Windows, gives you full administrative functionality, gives you a lot of reporting and analytics. You can track compliance, which is great so that if you're one of those institutions such as maybe financial healthcare institution that has to meet certain requirements such as uh, FIPS or HIPAA compliance, uh, this will give you a great way for you to be able to track that compliance and actually prove back to those agencies that you are compliant with those mobile type devices. So that completes the overview of Admin AirWatch console within the EUC test drive environment. Again, going back to the test drive environment here, to get to that admin console, it's gonna be this AirWatch admin console. You're gonna click that, that will open up the new tab. Again, don't forget to look at the walkthroughs here. Uh, these test drive KBs, you can look at all the AirWatch as well as the other solution sets that we have in there. Also the YouTube videos. Just another side note I'd like to mention in reference to just the overall test drive environment. Being a demo and not a production environment, from a support aspect, you'll see right here, SLA. Um, support is Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Average response time is about four hour response and 48 hours to resolution. Now, traditionally, it's quicker than that, but that's kind of our default answer for getting resolutions. I do highly recommend that before you start demoing AirWatch or any of the other solution sets within the test drive environment, that you get your account set up. You make sure that you go to the My Services section here. Make sure you've turned on and enabled the appropriate services. I just recommend that once you log into your account for the first time, go in and enable all of these so they're ready to go because it does take a little time to get enabled. And then if you are going to be doing a demonstration on any solution within the test drive environment, say you're going to be doing one for a customer tomorrow, I highly recommend you go in the day before or early that morning, log into your account, make sure you can launch the particular solution, whether it be the AirWatch Admin Console or one of the other ones and make sure everything's working properly. That way, if it doesn't, you can go ahead and enter a ticket. And I do wanna show you that real quick here as far as support, uh, report a bug, either one of these, whether it's a support request. So if you go to the support, you're gonna put in just a quick uh, description of your issue. And then the body here, I do recommend that you put a full description of the problem that you're having more details, the better. And this reminds you of the support window Monday through Friday, nine to five Pacific Standard Time. Um, and then submit the request, it's that simple. And they will help you. They're really good about uh, replying pretty quickly, getting your issues resolved. Uh, but I do recommend that whenever you're gonna be potentially doing a demo for an end customer, or one of your partners that you definitely go and test it out ahead of time so that if there is an issue, you can put in a support request. If you find an actual bug in the system that's just not working the way it's supposed to, uh, pretty much the same thing. You're gonna click on report the bug. You're gonna select the particular solution set that you're having problems with, put in a detailed description and click submit. And it's that simple. And as a partner, if you're looking to invite either a coworker or one of your partners or customers, you can invite a partner and you can invite new user here. If you have a Salesforce opportunity ID, you're gonna put it in here. If you don't put one in there, just be aware that the invite that you send out, they're only gonna have five days access to the test drive environment. If you do actually have a Salesforce opportunity ID that you can put in here because it's related to an opportunity, it will give them a 30 day period to use the test drive environment. Then they just put in simply their first name, last name, their uh, work title. You can create a username for them, put in their email address. 
Also make sure that you're selecting the appropriate region that they're in. If they're in the United States, you want to select the Americas region. If they're in Europe, make sure you select Europe. That way it'll provision their account in the appropriate region. That way when they connect to it, it'll perform as it should. Whereas if you put them in the wrong region, then they're going to be connecting across to another region for their account. And that could obviously have some uh, impact on their performance. And then you can enable whatever services. By default, it does enable all of them for you. I recommend just leaving that and then simply click invite new user. And they will get an email with a link to get logged in, change the password and get logged in and get to work. And it's that simple. And then here is the logout. So that completes this demonstration of the AirWatch Admin Console, as well as just kind of a quick overview of the test drive environment, since it is within the UC test drive environment. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope the information was useful and that you've got a better idea of what the AirWatch Admin Console offers, what kind of uh, capabilities it has as far as managing devices, as well as the type of offerings for content compliance and much more. So again, that completes this demo of the AirWatch Admin Console within the End User Computing Test Drive demo environment. I hope this information was useful to you. I look forward to you coming back and watching more of my enablement videos. Thank you and have a wonderful day.